What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 67 and we start today's episode with a bid for Gubels, uh, Atalanta putting in a bid for our French forward of 19.2 mil and this is a really interesting one as well because obviously right towards the back end of the last episode we just signed Eddie Nketiah from Brighton bringing him back to the Emirates Stadium, we love to do that with the former Arsenal Academy graduates uh, since we joined here at the Emirates Stadium but for Gubels, you know we picked him up on a free transfer at the start of last Last season and this is why as I always say it's always worth regardless of how good your team is and how far you into your career mode save check in the free agents pool at the start of every single season because even if you don't plan to keep the players you pick up for long you can sign them and then cash in on them for a profit. We picked up Gorbels on a free transfer. He's on a relatively decent wage, but nothing astronomical for a club of our stature. And we're now going to sell him to Atalanta for 22.5 mil after just one season. That's why, again, those free agents definitely worth looking at season after season, regardless of how good your club is. It's either a great way to bring in some squad depth, like Gorbels was for us last season, a great way to add more first team quality to your team in terms of who you can pick up maybe if you're like a three and a half star team you might find some certain players and go straight into your first 11 or bench or again like we've done here with Gabels sell them on for a profit in the following season so he's off to Atalanta with 22.5 mil did okay in his first season for us but now behind Nketiah Dolberg and of course last year's golden boot winner and the top scorer to start the season off Luis Suarez he won't get much game time so first game of today's episode here Southampton away south coast uh, took lead early through that man once again Luis Suarez but the Saints would equalize for a really, really frustrating goal. You know, I noticed in this year's FIFA and also last year's FIFA happened a lot as well. A lot of the times your defenders will try and shield the ball with their body, but they seem to misjudge the, uh, the, the not necessarily the flight of the ball, they seem to judge the spin of the ball or the bounce of the ball. And it's very frustrating because Ben White puts his body across Josh Marger there and then lets him run around the other side. I mean, really poor defending. But thankfully, we'll win the game later on through Luis Suarez. I think I said he scored the first goal. Sorry, it was Harvey Barnes who scored the first goal in for the tired Smith row. But yeah, Barnes scored our first. Suarez scored our winner later on. That means we maintain our 100% start to the season. So I had to win it the hard way, but won it in the end. So two on the final score there. And there we see confirmation for Wales has indeed gone to Atalanta for £22.5 million. Pounds. Again, one season at the Emirates. And then we cash in. I'll do pits one of three for 22 and a half mil. That's just fantastic business there. So now we've got around 37 million in our budget with deadline day approaching. And just before we get there, we see the match rescheduled emails. We've had a draw for the Champions League group stage where Arsenal have got for their second year back in the Champions League. Wait for it. <laughs> Wait for it. There we are. Group H. Bayer Leverkusen, RB Salzburg and Sparta Prague. We've got the German side, the Austrian side and a Czech Republic side as well. And I've got to say, I think we're clear front runners in that group as well. Now, of course, don't forget last year, of course, we had PSG in our group. We knew that was going to be incredibly tough to top in. Yeah, we finished runners up. But this year, I think looking at that group there, yes, Bayer Leverkusen, Sparta Prague and RB Salzburg, you know, they're all decent sides. Don't get me wrong. And I do have a habit of occasionally underestimating sides that I'm drawn against in European groups, but I think Bayer Leverkusen, you'd probably say could be the toughest uh, soft side out of the three there, but I, I think personally we're, we're front runners, no doubt about it. Yes, are these Salzburg and Sparta Prague could cause some problems, particularly away from home, but I think looking at the three teams we've been drawn against there, we, you'd probably say we're fairly top of that group, and I feel at the very, very least qualification is certain uh, for this year's Champions League group, just like it was last season as well, you know, finishing second place last year, but we kind of felt that would be the case when we were drawn, we would finish runners up to PSG, exactly what happened last year. This this year I'm targeting top spot. I think we've got what it takes to top group page this year. So for our second and final game of, sorry, second three games in today's episode, Manchester City at home. Massive game here at the Emirates Stadium. And heading into the game, you might have seen Luis Suarez was not in the starting 11. Instead, it was Casper Dolberg leading that line. And you might wonder why that is. Suarez off to a red-hot start this season, looking to retain his golden boot. He went away alongside Martinelli on international duty. And that is so frustrating. It only happens like once or possibly twice a season if you're playing top-tier uh, European football. But sometimes you'll miss a couple of players when they go on international duty. And sometimes for key fixtures, this already, just four games into the season, is one of the biggest of the campaign taking on what had been 
been the best team in England before Liverpool, of course, won the title last season. So taking on Guardiola's side, missing Suarez. Thankfully, Dolber, the Dane, comes in and scores his first of the year, makes it 1-0. Uh, Jesus fired a shot wide early in the first half, and then Josh De Silva almost diverted a, uh, a shot past Stefan into the back of the net, and it almost counted as well. It was indeed offside, so goal disallowed, and rightfully so, but totally wrong-footed the American there as we almost went 2-0. But it was still 1-0, and to be honest, I was in control for the majority of the game, but we know the quality of Man City possess. All they need is one chance, but, oh yeah, seven minutes to go for Ran Torres runs through one-on-one, -on -one, and Jan Old Black, the £95 million pound man coming in from Atletico Madrid in the summer with a crucial stop on Torres and then Tierney hoofs the ball off the line to ensure he'd hold on to the three points. And that's a massive win there psychologically as well because I've talked about it before. The team we struggled against the most in this save so far is Manchester City and then Liverpool. So no surprises there. They're the best two teams in England right now at this stage in the game. But yeah, massive win there and 100% starts the season continues with a big win against what will be a title rival 1 0 and a huge three points. So, for now, it's deadline day. Again, we had around 35 to 38 million pounds in our budget, but we did nothing. Once again, really, really quiet transfer deadline day, which is becoming a little bit of a theme in this save. Yes, we have made some moves on deadline day in previous seasons, but at the moment, sometimes I feel as though deadline days are a little bit quiet now. I seem to do my business quite early as opposed to leaving it to the last minute. So, nothing done on deadline day. And to be honest, I didn't feel the need to. You know, we've got a very good squad of 37 players. Yes, one too many goalkeepers. I know, I know. It's just it's been hard to um, to loan out and sell uh, some of the goalkeepers don't have much of a plan for for the long term future. But as we look at our academy here, as we end September. In terms of youth scouting this year, I think I'm going to have a season off youth scouting just because our side has the depth now and it has the quality and depth as well. And I don't know why, but in, in my few CMs, I quite like to have like a year where I don't do any scouting whatsoever and just prioritise the current crop of youngsters I've got along with my first team players and also the boys in the academy as well. There are some really decent players in our youth squad right now. And of course, the best is Ivan Ray. But if you're looking for youngsters that might burst onto the scene this year, there's a couple to look out for. Arlo Cunningham, who I wouldn't mind giving some game time this year. And also... Marcel Lelong, the young Frenchman who he position changed to attack in midfield. I'm definitely going to give him some minutes this season, no doubt about it. I want some good youth academy players to start performing and I, I want to get them in the team a bit more. It's so hard now to are a five-star team of Arsenal with some incredible players, but I will give him some game time this year. He's got some amazing hair, as we know, and um, I'm very excited to give him some minutes this season and see how he does. He went out on loan to RC Lons for the second half of last season, progressed to 75 overall. He looks very decent indeed, so... Following that, as you can see, we had one look at the squad, and uh, you can take a look at the depth of the squad there. And also, we gave free contracts to three players to deal with come the end of the year. Gwenduzi, Dolberg, and also Ari and B as well. As you see, our fixtures for September, some winnable fixtures in the Premier League, and uh, the first two games in our Champions League group, plus Wolves in our Carabao Cup third round as well, as we aim to retain it this season. And yeah, with the three players getting their extensions as well, you know, I was waiting to see if bids would come in for Gwenduzi and Dolberg, because I wouldn't have been against selling them. Like, they're both really really decent players especially for the bench as well Gwenduzi 85 overall and also of course Stolberg 84 overall but no bids came in whatsoever so I thought because they're both over the age of 22 23 and up is when players can get poached away on pre-contracts I thought January will come round sooner than you know it it always seems to in FIFA career mode before you know it you're into the January window so I gave them contract extensions that way they can't be poached away on free transfer so Dolberg stays Gwenduzi stays and Arian B is going to stay as well he got quite a lot of minutes last season and in season one too and I quite like him to be fair as a squad centre back. We also brought a youth player from the academy as well and we see he's got potential to be special but with Jan Oblak coming in at 93 overall he might be waiting a while to get some game time no doubt about that so I'll add him to the loan list along with like the other eight goalkeepers I've got and I'll try and loan them out here. As I said before like it can be quite hard to loan players out in FIFA CM. It has gotten a little bit easier um, since last season when it was like basically impossible but I'll try and loan them out and um, see if they can get some game time for quick exposure and quick development like we we saw with Marcel along last season at RC Lons. So for the third and final game of today's episode after a 100% start in the Premier League right now, travelling away to the South Coast to take on Brighton Graham Potter's side here. First half, early on, Eddie and Ketia goes down and the warning signs were there to see. Thankfully, Wood Soldier on though and stay on the pitch. But in the second half, Smith Rowe gives us the lead after a very scrappy goal. And then here, 20 minutes to go. I mean, there are moments where sometimes... I don't want to say anything. This is just a wonderful, wonderful solo goal from Emil. Declan Rice heads away the corner. Unfortunately, 
didn't get credited with the assist for the goal, which I thought he was robbed of the assist for this one. Heads it long, Smith Rowe runs onto it, and the body faint on the halfway line, then the ball roll to beat former teammate Gianluca Mancini, and the finish past Matty Ryan as well. I thought that was a glorious solo goal from Smith Rowe, one of the best I've scored in FIBA 21. That was class. Tune in the final score, and that means 100% starts the season continues. Top scorers with 12, 5 wins in 5, 2 points clear of Everton to begin the campaign off. Long way to go, but this is exactly the sort of start, uh, start, uh, sort of start we needed if we were to be in a title race this season. But always this episode of the Real CM, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you had, then please drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Real CM. Very soon.